what's up hello if you are new here my name is Kayla and you are watching Kayla's bookish vibes today's video is going to be an anticipated release video I already have one here on my channel if you're interested I will link it in the cards up above and I will also link the video down below if you haven't watched it you should in that video I covered quarter one of books and releases that I was really anticipating for 2024 and in today's video I'll be covering quarter two. Now I do believe I mentioned some of April's books in the last video but that's okay we'll only re-mention a few of them in this video only because I really really loved these books and I want you guys to pick them up when they come out in April. So in this video we are going to cover April, May, and June. So these are just books that I'm really interested in. The synopses sound interesting to me and I want to either check them out on publishing day or maybe wait until they come out in paperback or even check them out from my library, but they're just books that I'm interested in and I want to put them on your radar if they're not already on your radar. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna try and go in order from for the release date. So these should hopefully still be in order. Obviously things may change unbeknownst to me. So check them out, but I just wanna give you like a brief synopsis of each book. So the first book that we are going to talk about and I will try and scoot over so I can put the books here on the screen village weavers this is by miriam chancy this book is expected to release april 2nd so very soon this book is about two girls with a bond that refused to be broken in 1940s port-au-prince gertie and cc become fast childhood friends despite being on opposite ends of the social and economic ladder as young girls they build their unlikely friendship until a deathbed revelation ripples through their families and tears them apart Cece moves to Paris while Gertie marries into a wealthy Dominican family. Across decades and continents, through personal successes and failures, they are parted and reunited, slowly learning the truth of their singular relationship. Six decades later, with both women in the United States, a sudden phone call brings them back together once more to reckon with and perhaps forgive the past. The next book, this is one that I have already read and I do believe I mentioned it in my last video but that's okay because I really really need for you guys to read this book. It was so cute. This is a romance. It is called The Kids Countdown by Etta Easton. This one is releasing April 4th. Like I said I've already read this book and I really really enjoyed it. Now I did end up docking a star because this is not dual POV. This is only one POV and we're getting um, Mary. We are getting a Mary's point of view only. We are not getting the male, main, the male main character's point of view at all. The male main character's name is Vincent and I really wanted his point of view because Vincent to me is what makes this story so interesting. Vincent is an astronaut. When have you read a romance about an astronaut? You probably haven't and we don't get his point of view. He also has a very interesting family story that I really wanted to know more about after reading the book and unfortunately we don't get a lot about his family. We do get a little bit but I would want to hear it from Vincent's point of view. So I will say I docked a star for that but other than that this story was super cute. Uh, it was a rom-com so there were some well it was a rom. A lot of times rom-coms are just roms. There's not th there wasn't a lot of funny bits in this book but it was very romantic and I thought it was very sweet and I highly recommend. If you've been watching my channel then you know I like a very certain type of romance. I think if you really enjoyed The Neighbor Favor and The Partner Plot which those two books are by Christina Forrest then I think you would really enjoy this one because the same type of sweetness and endearing um, nature that you find between Christina Forrest characters are present in this book. So I highly recommend this one. Again it comes out April 4th. Our next book When I Think of You this is another romance and listen I'm not a romance girly. I enjoy romance every now and then but I don't even think I read a romance this month. I probably didn't. I enjoy romances but it's not like my go-to genre. And this one was really really good. This one is by Maya Ariel and it comes out April 16th. If you enjoyed Real by Kennedy Ryan, the only reason I'm comparing it to Real is because you kind of get two stories in one. So in this book we are following Kalia Wilson and Danny Prescott. So Kalia is in the production industry. She wants to be a producer. She wants to write movies, produce movies, direct movies, that type of thing. But right now she's, she's still paying her dues and she's working at the front desk as a receptionist for a major production company. In walks Danny Prescott who is her 
college sweetheart they had a whirlwind romance and it was like her first time falling in love so she was really smitten with this guy and he broke her heart well now Danny Prescott waltzes in and he's a big time director so his career has taken off and now he is seeing Kalia at the front desk and he rescues her he offers her a job and we take off from there I say it's two stories in one because Danny offers her a job to help him or assist him in producing his next movie the movie that he is producing is the love story of his mom and dad. They are an interracial couple and they were dating in I believe the 1950s. I do know that it was during a time where black and white people were not in not in relationships. So that is the love story that he's portraying and we get a little bit of information about that. So just like in real when you got like flashbacks of the movie that they were making in real back in Eddie Ryan. If you've read that book you know what I'm talking about that's not a spoiler you kind of get two stories in one and the same goes with this one you get like the present day story but you also get some pieces of the love of the love story between Danny's parents I love the writing style I felt like it was just enough spice for me if you like spice in your romances there is spice and it's not closed door um it is a slow burn though and I really like that because it builds up the angst the anticipation highly recommend when this book comes out you need to get it although I've already read it and I have it on my kindle I will be getting a pencil copy for my shelf Next we have You Know What You Did by K.T. Nyan. Now this is a thriller and it comes out April 16th as well. I'm really interested in this one because I don't I don't believe I have a single thriller on my shelf written by an Asian author. Then I read the synopsis and I was like yeah this sounds like it's going to be so good. I know I said I was going to stop buying thrillers. I lied okay sue me. Annie and Lee Shaw grew up poor but seems to have it all now. A dream career, a stunning home, and a devoted husband and daughter. So obviously we're going to start off with like this perfect life. When Annie's mother, a Vietnam war refugee, dies suddenly one night, Annie's carefully curated life begins to unravel. Her obsessive compulsive disorder, which she thought she vanquished years ago, comes roaring back. But this time, the disturbing fixations swirling around in Annie's brain might actually be coming true. A prominent art patron disappears and the investigation zeroes in on Annie. Spiraling with self-doubt, she distances herself from her family and friends only to wake up in a hotel room naked next to a lifeless body. The police have more questions, but with her mind increasingly fractured, Annie doesn't have answers. All she knows is this, she will do anything to protect her daughter, even if it means losing herself. Now the author note on this one says, personality wise, I'm not, I'm not much like my main character, Annie Shaw. However, we do have one big thing in common. We're both recovering from obsessive compulsive disorder. Through Annie, I described some of my lived experience with the disgust driven contam contamination based OCD. The imagery is raw and vivid and very necessary to realistically portray how this chronic disorder can affect people's everyday lives, how it can make you feel like a prisoner in your own body. So the author has firsthand experience with OCD and I'm really interested in seeing how she portrays that and how she writes that in this book. I feel like it's going to be so good. I've never read any thriller that contained OCD or a thriller that contained it's like to be like a refugee here in the States. And I'm really interested. It's just going to be something that I've never read before and I'm really interested in this book. Now the next one is also a thriller and I'm also very interested because it's nothing like I've ever read before. I believe I mentioned this one in my last video but I'm going to say it again because this sounds so good. It's called One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. This one comes out also on April 16th so I will be having a nice little fun day in Barnes & Noble on April 16th. It says years after a breakdown and a diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder derailed her historical preservationist career, Kenitra Nash and her alters have been given a second chance. They can't refuse a position as resident caretaker of a historic home. Having been dormant for years, Ken has no idea what led them to this isolated Hudson River Island, but she's determined not to ruin their opportunity. Then a surprise visit from the home's conservation trust just as nor'easter bears down on the island disrupts her newfound life leaving ken trapped with a group of possibly dangerous strangers including the man who brought her life tumbling down years earlier now this really reminds me of a riley sager book that i read last year i'll put it on the screen because i can see the cover but i cannot remember 
the title. This Riley Sager book really puts me in the mind of this because she is a caretaker, a resident caretaker of a historic home. And in that book, the main character is a caretaker of a of an older lady in like a historic home. I'm hoping that the atmospheric vibes that I really enjoyed in that Riley Sager book are present in this one because I love me a good atmospheric thriller. So I'm really excited about this one. Again, it comes out April 16th. Next book I have is another romance. Now I tried a book from this author earlier this year and I ended up DNFing it. So I wanna get this book to give this author another try to see if maybe it was just that specific book that I did not like. Obviously, I feel like you should give authors a second try and not just to like throw the entire author away because you didn't like one of their books. So this book is called The Good Ones Are Taken and it is by Taj McCoy. This one comes out on April 23rd. When Maggie's best friend admits he's in love with her, she'll have to decide whether it's worth giving up something good for something that could be amazing in this laugh out loud friends to lover rom-com. After a bad breakup, Maggie wants to find her Prince Charming, but all she's finding are frogs. When her best friend Savvy and Joan apply pressure and demand she find a date worthy of attending their respective weddings, she agrees to make to take her own advice and try online dating. So both of her best friends are getting married. And something that I did not enjoy about the last book that I read about this author is it felt like I was getting too much of the best friends and it felt like the romance was taking a back seat. So I'm hoping that in this book, there's another friend group. I'm hoping that the friend group takes a back seat and they were not more involved with like her best friends and their weddings and more involved with the main character Maggie's romance. Hopefully this one catches my attention. I do know that there are going to be two love interests and she's going to have to choose between the two guys. I also know that she is um, the, the bridesmaid in both of her friends wedding which I thought that was a bit much. Like do you know how much pressure you would have to be under if both of your best friends are getting married and you're the maid of honor in both of those weddings? That's a lot. We have another thriller. So I guess quarter two is gonna be the quarter of thrillers. This is by Sally Hepworth. Sally Hepworth is an autobi is an autobi author for me, and this book is called Darling Girls. It comes out April 23rd. So for as long as they can remember, Jessica, Nora, and Alicia have been told how lucky they are. As young girls, they were rescued from family tragedies and raised by a loving foster mother, Miss Fairchild on an idyllic farming estate and given an elusive second chance at a happy family life. But their childhood wasn't the fairy tale everyone thinks it was. Miss Fairchild had rules, Miss Fairchild could be unpredictable, and Miss Fairchild was never ever to be crossed. In a moment of desperation, the three broke away from Miss Fairchild and thought they were free. Even though they never saw her again, she was always somewhere in the shadows of their minds. When a body is discovered under the home they grew up in, the foster sisters find themselves thrust into the spotlight as key witnesses. Or are they prime suspects? I love that synopsis because I am very familiar with Sally Hepworth's writing. And I know sometimes a synopsis can be better than the actual book, but I'm very familiar with Sally Hepworth and her style of writing because I've read quite a few of her books. And again, she is an auto by author for me. So I know she is going to do that synopsis justice and I just can't wait to see the story and what twists and turns she has up her sleeve. Cannot wait. Again that one comes out April 23rd. Next we have Blood Justice. Now this is a fantasy and it is by Terry J. Bitten Walker. This is the book this is book two in the Blood Debt series so I won't be reading a synopsis of this book but I will give you a brief synopsis of the first book which is called Blood Debts. 30 years ago, a young woman was murdered, a family was lynched, and New Orleans saw the greatest magical massacre in its history. In the days that followed, a throne was stolen from a queen. On the anniversary of these brutal events, Clement and Christina, 16-year-old twin heirs to the powerful, magical, dethroned family, are mourning their father and caring for their sick mother. Until by chance, they discover their mother isn't sick. She's cursed, cursed by someone on the very magic council their family used to rule someone who will come for them next. This book I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the pace. I thought it was the perfect pace and I'm really looking forward to finding out what happens in book two. I don't want to give too much away for either of these books but if you are into YA fantasy I highly recommend that you check out, check out Blood Debts if you haven't already. Next book is also going to be me giving an author a second try. It is by Geneva Rose and her book is a thriller. It is called Home is Where the Bodies Are. Now I tried to read a book by Geneva Rose last year and I ended up DNFing it. I don't even remember which 
book it was but I know I remembered DNFing it because something just gave me major ick in it and it was something that had to do with the character's hygiene. <laughs> I just remember there was a scene and I was just like that is absolutely disgusting and I don't want to read this book. I think the book I was trying to read was The Perfect Marriage and it happened very early on. I believe it was like within chapter one or chapter two that I ended up DNFing that book and maybe I'll pick it back up and try to read it, read it again. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood and that part just like did it for me but I want to give her another chance and I love the cover of this book. I think it is very unique. So this book comes out April 30th and it says after their mother passes three estranged siblings reunite to sort out her estate. Beth, the oldest, never left home. She stayed with her mom, caring for her until the very end. Nicole, the middle child, has kept a, has kept at arm's length due to her ongoing battle with a serious drug addiction. Michael, the youngest, lives out of state and hasn't been back to their small Wisconsin town since their father ran out on them seven years before. While going through their parents' belongings, the siblings stumble upon a collection of home videos and decide to revisit those happier memories. However, the nostalgia is cut short when one of the VHS tapes reveals a night back in 1999 that none of them had any recollection of. On screen, their father appears covered in blood. What follows is a dead body and a pact between their parents to get rid of it before the video abruptly ends. Beth, Nicole, and Michael must now decide whether to leave the past in the past or uncover the dark secret their mother took to her grave. Does that not sound intriguing? It honestly kind of reminds me of an episode of um, Black Mirror that I watched. It was very eerie, very creepy, but it kind of faintly reminds me of that. This sounds really good and I'm interested. So I'm going to give her another try. I'm probably going to check this one out for my library because if I buy this book and I dislike it, that'll be like three books of hers on my shelf and I'm not trying to waste money but I do want to check it out. Next we have a YA historical fiction. I cannot wait for this book. This is truly a highly anticipated book for me. Once I get this book I'm probably going to read it same day. Like this is a book that I'm probably going to go to the store, buy it on pub day, and start reading it on that day because I'm so excited for this book. It is called More Than This and this is part of the Davenport series by Crystal Marquis. This is book two. I absolutely loved Davenport last year. It was so good. First one, The Davenports. Ugh, I love these covers also. In 1910, the Davenports are one of the new black families of immense wealth and status in a changing United States. The fortune made through the entrepreneurship of William Davenport, a family enslaved man who founded the Davenport Carriage Company years ago. Now the Davenports live surrounded by servants, crystal chandeliers, and endless parties finding their way and finding love, even where they're not supposed to. Olivia, the beautiful oldest daughter, ready to do her duty by getting married until she meets the charismatic civil rights leader, Washington Dwight and Sparks Fly. Younger daughter, Helen, is more interested in fixing cars than falling in love, unless it's with her sister's suitor. Amy Rose, the childhood of friend turned maid to the Davenport sisters, dreams of opening her own business and marrying the one man she can never be with, Olivia and Helen's brother, John. But Olivia's best friend, Ruby, also has her eyes set on John Davenport though she can't seem to keep his interest it was it was beautiful it may sound like a lot it may sound like a lot of names it may sound like a lot of like who's gonna be with who but I promise you it's not nearly as messy as it sounds but it's definitely still messy it was just so good it was so good and so sweet it's a historical fiction romance and it was so good please if you haven't read the Davenport's Please read the Davenport. I don't know if I mentioned, but the second the second book, um, more than this, comes out May seventh. The next book is called It Waits in the Forest. This is by Sarah Das, and it comes out May fourteenth. Uh, this is a fantasy, and it is young a young adult. So it says, unlike the other residents of the small Caribbean island of Saint Virgil, Selena does not believe in magic. With a logical mind and a knack for botany, Selena used to dream of leaving the island to study pharmacology until a vicious, unsolved attack left her father dead and her mother in a coma. Now her guilt over her mother's condition keeps her tethered to the island, relegated to conning gullible tourists with useless talesmen and phony protection rituals. But when one of those tourists ends up at the center of a string of strange murders, the truth that Selena has been denying can no longer be denied. There is evil lurking in the forest that surrounds St. Virgil. Another thing that can't be avoided, 
Selena's ex-boyfriend, Gabriel, newly employed at the local newspaper and eager to put his investigation skills to use. So it sounds like there's going to be like a little subplot of romance in there. And I'm really, I love the cover of this book. It is absolutely stunning. What it reminds me of considering that it is fantasy YA and it has to do with botany, I'm assuming, because it mentioned botany in the synopsis and the cover, obviously, is a book I haven't actually read, so I don't know called The Poison Heart. I wonder if these two are going to be similar and maybe I'll do a reading vlog reading both of those because I haven't read The Poison Heart although I do own it. So again It Waits in the Forest comes out May 14th. It is a YA fantasy. Next we have The Dangerous Ones by Lauren Blackwood. This comes out May 14th and this is a fantasy with vampires, historical fiction, and it is young adult. It says a romantic historical fantasy set in the American Civil War with vampires and people with demigod-like abilities. I think I remember reading the synopsis and being like, there's a lot going on in this book and I'm more interested in seeing how she was able to combine everything that she's combined and make it good. Like, is it going to be good? I'm just very, my interest is piqued with this book and I'm really interested. As someone who loves historical fiction, who also loves fantasy, her combining the two, I'm just super interesting. This takes place in 1863 in Pennsylvania. War doesn't scare Jerusalem. That's the main character's name. She's a saint. Thanks to powerful demigod style reflexes, endurance, and strength, she's fearless. And ever since the Confederates declared civil war, partnering with the vampires who benefited off slavery, she and her battalion of saints are essential to the Union Army. Jerusalem herself had been enslaved by a vampire, escaping north only after her family was murdered. She knows the enemy better, hates the enemy more than anyone in her battalion, and has been using it to her advantage since she joined the war a year ago. More than anything, she wants revenge. But if she can help black people gain freedom and equality without having to steal it for themselves like she had to, then all the better. But she, has ne but she never expects to have to team up with a vampire to do it. Alexi is one of those handsome, arrogant, ancient vampires, but he's on the Union side and in the year they've known each other has never done anything but prove he's on hers. Together, they set out to change the course of the war and take down the vampire who destroyed everyone Jerusalem loved. But for her, it's about more than justice. It's about killing a god. Like I said, there's a lot going on here. Demigods, vampires, historical elements, all smashed into one. I'm interested. I just want to see if she did it, if she did, and if she did it well. So we'll see. Again, this book comes out May 14th. Next, we have One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. This is another thriller, and it comes out May 21st. Now, this thriller is 400 pages, and I'm not one for long thrillers. I feel like if it's a thriller, it should be between like 300, 340, 350 is pushing it. But anything over 350 pages for a thriller, I'm just like, why are we still going? Isla is in a bit of a rut. Her postdoctoral research has fills it out. She's pretty sure they won't extend her contract and things with her boyfriend, Nico, an aspiring actor, aren't going great. When the opportunity arises for Nico to join the cast of a new reality TV show, The Perfect Couple, she decides to try out with him. A whirlwind audition process later, Lila finds herself whisked off to a tropical paradise with Nico, boating through the Indian Ocean towards Ever After Island, where the two of them will complete will compete against four other couples. Not long after they arrive on the deserted island, things start to go wrong. After the first challenge leaves everyone rattled and angry, an overnight storm takes matters from bad to worse. Cut off from the mainland by miles of ocean, deprived of their phones and unable to contact the crew that brought them there, the group must band together for survival. Attention runs high and fresh water runs low, Lila finds that this game show is all too real and the stakes are life and death. So psychological suspense, I'm interested. I feel like the cover is telling me I have to read it on the beach. With 400 pages, who's going to have time to read 400 pages on a beach? It just seems like the perfect summer thriller. So I do want to check it out. Again, this one comes out May 21st. Next, we have another romance. This one is Pardon My Frenchie by Farrah Rashawn. I have not read a single book by Miss Farrah Rashawn. I have a few of her books on my shelf, so maybe I'll do a taste test for this author. But this comes out on June 4th. 
and it is a rom-com. I think the cover is so cute. Ashanti Wright is ecstatic over the success of her dog boarding business, Barkingham Palace. <laughs> that is so cute. In fact, it has become so successful that Ashanti has plans to expand her empire with a doggy bake shop. There's just one problem. The building she's had her eye on has been sold to the sorely grandson of one of her favorite customers. Thaddeus Sims is not a dog person. He's barely a person's person. But when his grandmother is transferred to a senior living facility that doesn't accept pets, the former army officer agrees to care for her annoying standard poodle. Puddin. <laughs> Puddin. After all, it was with his grandmother's help that Thad was able to buy the building that will soon house the PX, a sports bar, all around hangout space for former, for former servicemen that he plans to open. So it sounds like it's going to be a grumpy sunshine, maybe like rivals type of romance. Puddin and Ashanti's French bulldog Duchess have become a bit of a sensation on Barkingham Palace's live stream because of their budding romance. When a video of the dog sharing a doggy tree, lady and tramp style goes viral, their owners are sucked into a media frenzy that captures the nation by storm and creates some sparks for their owners too. This is going to be so cute. I can just tell. And again, it comes out June 4th. Can't wait to get it. The next one, I believe, is the only horror novel that I have on my list. The cover seems interesting. And then the fact that it's like an historical horror is what's like making me want to get it. I have realized the historical horror element, like really enjoy it because I enjoy historical fiction. And because all of the horror novels that I have read so far last year, I really enjoyed them. But those were all historical horrors. So is this one. Do What Godmother Says. That's the name of the book and it comes out June 11th. A modern day writer and a Harlem Renaissance artist are connected by a painting with a deadly secret in this gripping dual timeline gothic thriller. I'm going to love it. A modern day writer. So we're getting two points of view, two different timelines. One of the timelines is the Harlem Renaissance, which is one of my favorite time periods. I'm going to love this book and it's a thriller. It's going to be so interesting. Shanice Pierce knows better than to heed bad omens, but it's hard to ignore the signs when she finds herself newly single and out of a job on the same cursed day. Then while cleaning at her grandmother's house, Shanice comes across a painting. Drawn to the painting's portrait in a way she can't explain, Shanice accepts her grandmother's offer to keep the family heirloom. She soon uncovers the story of the artist, a Harlem Renaissance painter named Estelle Johnson. The young woman was taken under wing by the wealthy art patron Maude Bachman, or Godmother, as she insisted her artist call her. She vanished shortly after Bachman's brutal murder. As Shanice digs deeper, the paranoia that's haunted her for years returns. She becomes convinced she's being stalked and that the deaths happening around her are connected to the staggering offer she turned down for the painting. The truth is hiding in plain sight is even more shocking and deadly than Shanice could possibly have imagined. So it is tagged as thriller, horror, fiction, gothic, and suspense. I think I'm going to love it. Can't wait. Okay, the next book we have is another thriller. This book comes out June 18th and it is called What You Leave Behind by Wanda M. Morris. Dina Wood's life has fallen apart in the aftermath of losing her beloved mother, her marriage, and her prestigious job at an Atlanta law firm. She needs what the Geechee people of coastal Georgia call a day clean, a first start. Already loving this. My husband is Geechee. He's from South Carolina. And anytime I can read books about that, I just love it because I love talking to him about that book. Um, she returns to her childhood home in Brunswick, Georgia to heal, but her return is anything but the respite she thought it would be. To make peace with all her loss, she often drives through the city. One day, she unwittingly finds herself on the oceanfront property of a loner widower who is fighting to keep land that has been in his family since the end of the Civil War. I'm going to love this because this happens, unfortunately, in real life. To this day, people are losing their land that has been in their family for a long time. But don't let me go off on a tangent. He threatens her and warns her to never return. But shortly after, he disappears and his very expensive property is quickly put up for sale. 
Curious about what has happened to the man, Dina digs into his disappearance and finds a family legacy at risk. What starts out as a bit of curious snooping turns into a deadly game of illegal land grabs and property redevelopment in poor and rural communities with dark and powerful forces at work. Give me a story with something to say, okay? Give me a story that's going to keep me interested, it's going to keep me entertained, but it's also going to make me do my Googles and learn some things. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this book and I'm such a nerd. Without realizing it, Dina finds herself caught up in a nightmare scheme that threatens her community and her family. She'll need help and finds it in a close but unlikely source because she knows she must do whatever it takes to stop the sinister forces at play before she becomes their next target. What You Leave Behind comes out June 18th. I don't know if I said that or not. Next we have Sleep Like Death and this is by Kaylin Bayron. I have three books by this author on my shelf that I have not read yet. And here I am adding another book to my TBR by this author. And I don't even know if I like her writing style. So I need to read, I'm gonna read her series. I think there's a duology. I need to read that before I pick up this book to see if we even gel, okay? But this is what this book is about. Only the truly desperate and foolish seek out the night, an ancient monster who twists wishes into curses. Eve knows this firsthand. One of her mothers was cursed by the night and trapped in the body of a songbird. When the unique abilities to communicate with animals and conjure weapons from nature, Eve has trained all her life to defeat him. With more and more villagers harmed by the night's corrupt deals, Eve believes she's finally ready to face him. But when Queen Regina begins acting strangely, talking seemingly to no one, isolating herself and lashing out at the slightest provocation, Eve must question if her powers are enough to save her family and her kingdom. So this is a fantasy, a retelling, it's young adult. It's a Snow White. I'm trying to figure out, I'm just like, what retelling is it? It's a Snow White retelling that brings a new and exciting voice to this familiar tale. The cover, easy, breezy, beautiful. She's a cover girl. I love the cover. This book releases July 2nd. And I believe the last book I have for you is another YA fantasy. This is called Children of Anguish and Anarchy. This is book three in the Legacy of Orisha series. The second book is Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I have the first two on my shelf and I have not read them. So I need to read them before I get this one. The first book, Children of Blood and Bone. They killed my mother. They took our magic. They tried to bury us. Now we rise. Zeli Arebola remembers when the soil of Orisha hummed with magic. Burners ignited flames, titers beckoned waves, and Zeli's reaper mother summoned forth souls. But everything changed, the night magic disappeared. Under the orders of a ruthless king, magi were killed, leaving Zeli without a mother and her people without hope. But Zeli has one chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy. With the help of a rogue princess, Zeli must outwit and outrun the crown prince who is hell bent on eradicating magic for good. Danger lurks in Orisha, where creatures prowl and vengeful spirits wait in the waters. Yet the greatest danger may be Zelly herself as she struggles to control her powers and her growing feelings for an enemy. So it's fantasy, young adult, fiction. There is romance, so it sounds like it's a fantasy romance, but it's a YA fantasy romance. And I'm excited. It sounds like she's going to be coming into her own, coming into her powers, trying to figure out what her powers are and what she's capable of and maybe possibly falling in love on the way, redeeming her people, saving her people. I'm here for it. And I need to read this book so I can read the second book so I can be ready for the third book when it comes out on June 25th. So I got some time, okay? I got a little time to read and prepare for this third book. All right, guys, I think that's all the books. I don't know how many books that was, but that's all I have for you for quarter two. These are my anticipated releases for the second quarter of 2024. Are any of these on your radar? Do you plan to add any of these to your TBR? Please let me know down in the comments below. And if you made it to the end of today's video, don't forget to leave this emoji so I know that you watched the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.